Hello everyone, this is Shobha from CNS. Welcome to the ninth episode of APCR SHR 10 Dialogues, a special series of online interviews with leaders from the Asia Pacific on the theme of sexual and reproductive health and rights in Asia Pacific, the 2030 SDGs vision and the 2020 realities. This is also the theme of the 10th Asia Pacific Conference on reproductive and sexual health and rights, what we commonly refer to as APCR SHR 10. For the benefit of our viewers, these dialogues will be live streamed on Facebook pages of CNS and APCR SHR 10. Today's episode of APCR SHR 10 dialogues will focus on issues related to coronavirus disease or COVID-19 pandemic and young people in Asia and the Pacific region. Friends, as we all know, on 30th January 2020, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern. National measures enforced to contain the pandemic have had healthcare impacts as well as economic implications to countries. Its healthcare impacts have resulted in disruption and decrease in the availability and accessibility of sexual and reproductive health services. Even before the pandemic, we have seen the struggle of young people in accessing information and services on sexual and reproductive health. And this crisis has now made it even worse. The impact of COVID-19 lockdown on young people is being seen in other fields as well. In education, 90% of the world's students are being kept away from attending classes because of the lockdown. Access to health services, specifically life-saving reproductive health services, drastic increase in gender-based and intimate partner violence, and sexual exploitation of young women and girls are some of the other consequences which are arising. Well, let us hear from more from our experts. We are indeed honored to have on our panel of speakers today, Sangeet Kais, Yuping Koa, and Shilani Palihavadana. Sangeet is coordinator and foundation, founder of YPEER Asia Pacific Regional Center, Thailand, and he is also a member of the International Steering Committee of APCR SHR 10. Yuping is the youth representative of China Family Planning Association and core member of China Youth Network. Shilani is project coordinator at Youth Advocacy Network, Sri Lanka. A very warm welcome to all of you. Our first speaker is Sangeet. Sangeet, what has been the impact of COVID-19 on young people and what is the role of young people in mitigating risk during the pandemic? Over to you. Hey everyone. Can yes. You yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So thank you for the question and analyzing this call. Uh, definitely when we have to see the impact, I think most people are already aware what are the impact, but uh, I would like to present in like in different ways. So, so in my opinion, there have been both negative and positive impact of this COVID-19 lockdown and other measures so far. And uh, so what we are trying to do is, uh, so I'm trying to present it as a positive way as well as a negative way. So from the positive side, there are very, very few, uh, uh, but definitely uh, for countries like Asia, like our, like our countries, so I'm from Nepal, I work in Thailand, but for countries like our countries, it gives us like new arena to explore. For example, the online education, online discussions, this webinar. So this used to be very less and the opportunity or the learning opportunity for young people was quite less. Uh, but right now, as this lockdown is happening, uh, so we can find some few positive things which is happening. For example, uh, people are exploring new education, people are finding new ways to get uh, learnings and also finding new ways to get the services, et cetera, et cetera, the positive side. But when, when we have to see the negative side, uh, there are a lot. And uh, that's what uh, we would like to focus right now as well. And so I have been working, like, I think like, so beginning when it, 
this uh, lockdown everything started so so i i was in nepal uh, so i just flew from bangkok to here and i was stuck here so beginning let's say for 7 to 10 days uh, me and most of my friends most of my colleagues uh, i think they were not working properly because this was quite new for us and we we'll try we we're trying to work what will work uh, what we can do or how we can do and what we realized with the discussion with these young people and uh, also with uh, other experts uh, and other adults that when we talk about young people, most people think that uh, young people are only the students and whatever, uh, whatever uh, let's say plan we made or whatever thinking or thoughts we discussed and we did, uh, most people thought that, okay, the impact, they, all, they were only thinking among students. But when we come to reality, uh, when we come to reality or how we, or let's say overall looking at the young people, uh, they were not only uh, students, but they were doctors, immigrants, foreign workers, even the frontline workers and so many. So in fact, especially for them, uh, I would like to present in two different ways. So one is the people who were like, who are especially students. So definitely there have been gap on how students were learning, and also, especially in students, uh, there were a huge gap between urban and rural students. So just taking example of Nepal, uh, so in some private colleges, private schools, uh, they are having have, they are having this online classes. Though difficulties with the internet and other issues, uh, students are able to at least connect with the teachers, connect with their friends, and so many, uh, like and other, let's say, experts. But when we go to government schools or government colleges, uh, most of the schools and most of the colleges, they are stopped. So we can directly see the impact mostly on ruler or let's say not economical sound students. So these are the, some of the impacts. So when we talk about the mitigating the impact, uh, definitely uh, as young people are the one of the biggest group. So as we look at the demographic of all the Asian countries, uh, young people, and just let's say about uh, I'm thinking about adolescents and young people between 10 to 19. So these are the biggest group of people uh, in every, like in most of the countries, and definitely they have impacted a lot. So one of the thing uh, which which I see what they are doing is uh, trying to reduce the gaps, uh, like for the in terms of education, trying to reduce the gaps in terms of sharing the positive news, uh, trying to trying to reduce the gaps of uh, let's say connecting people so these are the few of the things which uh, the young people have been doing and again going back to the uh, impact and srhr so i also see this in two different ways so i will see like for example young people who were like not being uh, like totally aware for example in normal situation in like there were lots of ways that young people could take these services uh, for example youth friendly services counseling services, even like services such as abortion services and so on. But right now, as there is long lockdown and happening, so most of these services, not only for young people, but all this, all populations that have been directly impacted. And uh, I think that's the one of the way how we can see. And also the finally, uh, when we have to see my own work, like like what YPR does is the peer education. So this also have been uh, directly impacted because uh, in normal, normal situation, this is like kind of day-to-day -day work or general work, which uh, we just do every time. But right now, as schools have shut down, as there are lots of issues with the connectivity and lots of issue with even people dealing with this situation, like psychologically or economically. So this have directly impacted, impacted us a lot. Yeah. I think that's from my side, which I can say in this short time. Okay. Can you share something with uh, like... Uh how you are trying to, the challenges are there, but uh, has uh, YPR uh, thought of some ways of uh, somehow overcoming them or to maybe uh, co uh, counseling sessions online or some uh, something else if you are doing there? Yeah, so, uh, so we are doing a few things. Uh, so basically, uh, I would like to start with the platform. So uh, definitely, in I already told about the urban and rural area. So the gaps is definitely why we are trying to reach our existing programs or partnership in rural areas. So that has been like huge gap and we are trying to fulfill it. Uh, for the urban population or semi-urban population or semi-urban youths or members, 
what we have been trying to do is uh, we have been uh, selecting like since last two months, uh, especially last two months, we have been selecting these few platforms uh, which requires less data. For example, all of our audio call used to be in this platform called Jetsi. So it was, uh, we found that it was quite uh, good and clear and it consumes less data in all the countries and definitely it was accessible in China as well. The next thing what we were trying to do is trying to have uh, reduce this uh, uh, video calls and trying to focus more on audio calls or chat. So we're doing parallelly through messenger chat or also like messenger call, but at, as it has some limitation for audio calls, we use Jetsi for, for chat or other thing, we use messenger. And things what we have been trying to do, so apart from that is uh, recently, uh, we have been trying to launch this online e-course and some countries already did. So this online e-course, which we are doing is in Google platform. So I think most of you may be aware, most of you may not be aware. So Google platform is the online class where people don't have to be online, right? Like what we are doing right now. So they can definitely, we can, we upload the classes, we upload the sessions and they can log into that whenever they have internet and as it consumes less data. So that's what we are doing. And the third thing, what we are trying, what we are doing is uh, in partnership with other, other networks as, and as other individuals, we lost, launched this uh, platform called Leave Now. Uh, so the whole idea of Leave Now is to share the positive news, share the positive examples, as well as share the good things which is happening. So, so forgetting all the things which is happening around us, mostly linking COVID or mental health issues. So we're trying to address that indirectly, uh, but by sharing the good news. Uh, so I'll also post the link over here, but that's that are the three things what we are doing right now. So just to me repeat, so choosing the good platform, which can be accessible everywhere, choosing uh, topics, which is more accessible and choosing platform, which is more accessible, as well as uh, doing this, uh, trying to share good news rather than sharing this bad news or uh, like terrifying news which is all around us yeah thank you sangeet yes and it's indeed very important to keep up our spirits eye and to remain positive despite despite all uh, we move on to sri lanka and our next speaker is shilani palihavadana who's project coordinator at at youth advocacy network sri lanka uh, Shilani, can you share with us how the young people have been affected by COVID in Sri Lanka and what has, ha what has happened to their SRHR needs, needs during the pandemic? Um, thank you, Shobha. And uh, Sangeet, that uh, his input was very much insightful and uh, relatable to uh, Sri Lankan context as well. Um, so young people in Sri Lanka in a, uh, have been facing new, never before faced challenges uh, due to the pandemic and the resultant uh, lockdown or the curfew restrictions that were imposed. So in a most general sense, uh, specifically young people who are, uh, if I categorize young people into several, in terms of their financial dependency, there is a significant portion of young people living in Sri Lanka who work in the informal sector and are also daily wage earners and depend on industries like uh, tourism industry for their living. So due to the sudden and uh, sudden lockdown with uh, literally a day's notice, the lockdown that went on for almost two months, they are restricted at their homes without any uh, economic means to fulfill their even basic needs. And then if we turn on to young people who live with their parents, uh, either like having stable employment, parents and or living independently, having stable employment or uh, doing their educational activities. A lot of young people are finding um, when they go back to their employments, respective employments, now that things have uh, started to getting back to normal, the most of them are being let go because of the harsh economic conditions uh, that came as a result of uh, the pandemic. And young people who are still uh, doing the academics, they are finding that their entire academic uh, careers, academics have been come to a grinding halt and exams, mm -hmm. the academic activities are being postponed indefinitely without a date, without a knowing date whether as, as to where, when it is going to start. So in, in a general sense, uh, being restricted to home and the psychological and other physical impacts, health impacts are very much there, like uh, uh, Sangeet said. 
and turning into uh, SRHR for young people in Sri Lanka, uh, specifically, uh, lack of access uh, has been one of the main problems. Uh, so supply chains have been disrupted and there's now a prevailing uh, shortage of sanitary products and contraceptives and other SRH products available, specifically when it comes to rural areas. Not that there aren't uh, supplies but uh, it's not accessible the delivery services are operating but they're often expensive and the brands and the products they offer are also expensive and a lot of young people are unable to uh, afford them and the government who pro like, who's providing free reproductive uh, health services, uh, sexual and reproductive health services, the clinics are open but travel has been restricted therefore the youth cannot uh, access those clinics unless they have a very uh, vital reason. So uh, there have been practical restrictions like that and also specifically like, uh, a very, um, I think it's um, a problem felt by a lot of youth is that they've been restricted to homes, especially uh, whom uh, are dependent on their parents. They have to, uh, their sexuality is usually being uh, stigmatized, uh, adolescent sexuality specifically. So in, in a situation where they are restricted to homes, where their sexuality is looked down upon, it's very difficult to access reproductive and uh, reproductive uh, health services. For example, if you take a, a college student who's forced, uh, who's forced back to go and stay at home, if uh, she needs to access a pregnancy kit, she has to uh, by default go through her parents now to get access to a pregnancy kit, but she cannot uh, because her parents uh, operate on the assumption that she is not sexually active. So those kind of problems are felt very much uh, by the youths uh, during uh, this time. So it also brings me to another uh, key population, uh, people, young people living with disabilities. They also face uh, the same problems, if I may say, in a, uh, in a more much intense sense. Uh, so if you take people living with disability, young people living with uh, disabilities, they are again also we can categorize into two, uh, young people who live with their families or who live in uh, an institution, or uh, and the young people who are married and settled independently living with their partners or by themselves. So uh, the issues that they face are dif different. Uh, like in a general sense, uh, domestic violence and intimate partner violence have been on the rise since uh, Sri Lanka went into lockdown in mid-March. And this has been very much of an issue for uh, young people living with uh, disabilities because their specific disabilities have been uh, targeted in abuse. So that's uh, something that is affecting them very adversely. And if we go to young people uh, living in institutions, their main uh, challenge I see is lack of access to care. Uh, because of the lockdown and the regulations, consequent uh, regulations, uh, only, uh, only the minimum amount of uh, staff or uh, people are allowed to operate in any given institution. So uh, there are you uh, out of necessity sometimes uh, the rights of the right to privacy and dignity sometimes are being violated. For example, if you take um, a girl, a para para paraplegic girl who uh, would ideally need um, assistance from a female staff member, have to may have to rely on a male staff member due to the shortage of staff as a consequent consequence of uh, sh uh, staff shortage due to the pandemic. This in turn affects her right to privacy and dignity, but she has to, uh, she might be forced to go with the option available uh, out of necessity. So this is one uh, challenge. And mm -hmm. if I turn to uh, young people who are living outside uh, independently, and they also face the same uh, problems of access uh, to products and specifically to information. I know this, this is a very specific problem for young people living with hearing disabilities because I work with them the most. Um, even without the pandemic, uh, access to information is very much restricted for them because even the, uh, the attention uh, of the state and other stakeholders to uh, young people living with hearing disabilities are very much less. So one thing, uh, they get information but not as fast as the rest of the population do. 
so for example if uh, in a general sense uh, there have been uh, like a government and other private entities who uh, who've been uh, distributing relief that this uh, is restricted by the time the information reaches them it is too late for them to access so uh, specifically with regard to hygienic uh, hygiene products sanitary napkins and all uh, women have been forced to use uh, unhygienic substitutes due to the the lack of information flow going to the uh, community of uh, the uh, people living with hearing disabilities so there's only very few key uh, issues that um, young people living with disabilities also face that i think uh, is often overlooked uh, by a lot of uh, people who are working currently on this okay uh, how has your youth organization responded to the pandemic or any special way or any uh, steps you have taken um so as was as is the case for everyone at the beginning we were also we had to learn to work mm-hmm. Uh, in a situation like we've never been in so we had to build fr- build things from scratch in a sense so like we were able to we are actually aren't able to work, go out in the field like we used to have uh, sessions to improve access to young people uh, living with hearing disabilities in terms of uh, srh because their main problem is that they can't communicate uh, their uh, problems to others because uh, in, in in a gen- people don't uh, know sign language and at a first glance they can't they won't understand unlike uh, many other uh, disabilities hearing disabilities is not seen or like you cannot really uh, understand what is uh, under, under like, understand or see perceive it so um, there we've been mainly we've been working uh, with the government even before the pandemic uh, and after the pandemic we restrategized the um the process of working uh, to make sure that young people have uh, in- enough information to uh, manage their health mental well-being in a general sense srh included uh, during the pandemic so uh, youth advocacy network sri lanka was one of the youth organizations who helped the family health bureau of sri lanka to come up with content video based so that it's uh, accessible and uh, comprehensible for everyone and we've been disseminating the information that uh, the government came up with and at the moment sri lankan government is the strongest uh, has the strongest network of uh, healthcare is free and uh, the systems that have been put in place during the pandemic is actually it's commendable i would say so the best way for us to us now is to work with the government stakeholders and we've been starting to do it and apart from that we've been part of a lot of uh, social discourses uh, like because a lot of young people have time in their hands now and are at home and access to internet is uh, it's um, it's easy there is access to internet even though the digital in- infrastructure isn't spread evenly throughout the country we've been having uh, sessions to improve access or to clarify or to uh, bust the myths uh, in terms of srh uh, around young people uh, and even before that specifically for uh, people living with hearing disabilities it's something that we've uh, recognized is that the sign language used in sri lanka specifically with regard to uh, srh is it's very flawed that there are only two signs to indicate a lot of things and so we've been working with the unfpa to uh, create a sign language glossary in term uh, including uh, signs that uh, for srh terminology so we've been we have it already and we've been we were in the process of incorporating the signs into the curriculum and the teachers and the education system but uh, that was kind of put on hold uh, since march okay thank you very much and you are very right krishalani that we have to work together and work uh, with the government and uh, proactively from both sides the work has to be proactive from both sides thank you very much shalani hi we... hi yeah we can hear is it you. clear now yes yes thank god thanks thanks you are there you are there uh, so uh, you ping can you share china's uh, experience that how are the young people affected by covid-19 there and uh, what has been their experience and also 
what uh, how are their sexual and reproductive health needs being affected yes over to you Okay, thank you, Shopha. Mm -hmm. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share uh, Chinese young people's experience during the COVID-19. And I'll introduce myself again. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Yue Ping from Chinese Youth Network. And it's really nice to audio meet you all. So it was on January 15 when I came back to my hometown, Xiamen City, from Beijing, where I studied for my winter holiday. And... After the breakout of COVID-19, travel restrictions were imposed. So I have been staying at home for four months up to now. And as for uh, what, how are young people affected by COVID-19 in China, I think you might, know, you might know that the outbreak of COVID-19 in China was coincided with uh, Chinese Spring Festival. It was a peak time of migration and gathering. So to contain the spread of COVID-19, we were uh, suggested to stay at home and stop traveling or stop visiting your friends or relatives. So at the peak of COVID-19, most, peop most young people stay at home uh, with their families every day and uh, receive news from televisions and the social media that the situation was getting worse and some young people were even affected by negative uh, emotions such as anxiety, sadness, and frustrations exaggerate. So as for now, uh, many schools, universities are still closed. So as most young people do, I'm having online courses for the uh, spring semester and it, it is com coming to the end of the semester now. So uh, what happened to young people's uh, sexual and reproductive health and rights during the pandemic in China? To be honest, I think we were very lucky. Why? It was a long story. Um, it was last year when the typhoon Liki Ma hit China. So I, con I contacted with the youth representative from the Philippines Family Planning Association and asked her to uh, for some guidance. Then she sent me a spring training manual on the minimum initial service package, MISP, for sexual and reproductive health in crisis. So it was a very useful manual developed by IPPF, UNFPA, and IAWG. Thus, this year, at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, me and other members of China Youth Networks were alert to the potential SRHR risk uh, in this health emergency. So I think we were actually very lucky to have this uh, sensitiveness uh, at the very beginning. So as we observed during the pandemic, various types of SRHR challenges emerged gradually. For example, um, a shortage of menstruation necessities in the epidemic areas and difficulties, uh, difficulty of accessing HIV medicine, uh, lack of access to contraceptives, emerging, emerging unwanted pregnancy, uh, lack of maternal health services, increasing gender-based violence and domestic violence, etc. So these challenges, uh, from our point of view, these challenges made it harder for people in the epicenter and especially the vulnerable population to live through this uh, pandemic. So these are what I see from the pandemic. Okay, uh, thank you. And any special measures your youth organization took uh, during the, any other more methods? You have mentioned some of them uh, responding to the yeah. Yes, so uh, with these observations and uh, I have mentioned, we decided to take action soon. So I would like to share two main things we did uh, in response to the COVID-19. The, th the first thing is that uh, in order to meet the need of menstru menstruation necessities in the ep epidemic areas, we collect we collaborated with uh, China Family Planning Association to raise donation of menstruation supplies. So by March 19th, we have successfully donated more than 100,000 of supplies to hospitals in Hubei province, which is the epicenter. And we also donat donated to women with disabilities in some areas. 
And the second thing is that to meet the demand of SRHR information during the pandemic, we started to write articles, uh, make short video videos, such as TikTok videos, to teach young people how to correctly use contraceptive methods, how to cope with uh, gender-based violence, etc. So up to now, our videos have attracted more than uh, 15,000 times viewings. So it was actually a great achievement and I think that will help somehow. And we also once, uh, I would like to share a very detailed thing we happened. So we once received a consultation request from a boy. He told us that his partner is pregnant unintendedly and both of them are under 18 years old. So we tried our best to listen to him and guide him how to make decision with his partner under this uh, circumstances. And we really hope that these articles and videos can help young people in need to cope with uh, this kind of SRHR problems they meet, especially during this difficult period. Okay. So this I, is what we do. Thank you, that's great work. And thank you, Yuping. And uh, before we open the question and answer session, I can we please have a short take home uh, message, call to action from each of the panelists. And uh, let us begin from you, Ping, because I don't want to lose her again. I don't want her to lose the connection again. So okay. one take home mes message from you and then we go on to the other panelists, yes. Okay, so I will share a message I would like to deliver to other young people or the, in the audience, right? Yes, yes, because our audiences okay. are all young people, yes. So to the young people. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Yes. so actually the first thing I would like to say is that I'm looking forward to a more comprehensive emergency, emergency response mechanism developed by governments. So maybe uh, as young people, we can advocate for that because I think the government, uh, especially under this kind of health emergencies, governments should not only focus on uh, fighting against the virus, but also pay special attention to SRHR needs. And I hope more explorations can be made uh, on how to provide SRHR education and services online in the future. And last but not least, I hope more efforts from the civil society, uh, including our peer educators, our young people, can join in the emergency response, such as the COVID-19 response. In particular, I hope young people can, like me, can take our shared responsibilities, do whatever, whatever we can do. And I believe that uh, once we are meaningfully engaged in the joint efforts, we can make unique contributions, not only to our communities, but also the whole world. So these are what I would like to, would like to say, share. Okay, thank you. Shilani, your message? Yes, Shoba. Um, so I'd like to expand on what I was uh, telling earlier. As young people, I think, we can uh, and youth organizations with young people we can we can we have a vital op we are placed very well and we have the capacity to help the uh, the existing services to bridge the gap for example uh, the government as uh, we can see is like in, in terms of sri lanka are trying very hard to reach make sure that their the reach is everywhere and that everyone is getting access yes there are flows but that's where we come in we can help uh, the government bridge the gap and uh, convince and advocate for the good practices that came up during the pandemic. For example, in Sri Lanka, like I said, the healthcare is free and we went a step further to use the postal service for uh, to deliver medicine uh, free of charge anyways uh, to the, the, the homes of the patients and specifically people with uh, people living with disabilities have found it very convenient that they don't have to go to uh, a hospital to access medicine. So practices like this can extend beyond the time of pandemic uh, and the years to come. So we as youth organizations and young people can help uh, bridge the gap and uh, shed light to the areas where the government and uh, the, the, the vital stake, other vital stakeholders haven't been paying attention to and uh, help create the system like uh, uh, fine tune the system better. Um, I think that is something that we can do as young people uh, in Sri Lanka as well as in the world. Thank you. Sangeet. 
Yeah, so the message from my side will be the same. So it will be like mostly uh, to grab the opportunity because uh, the other side we cannot control. Uh, but the things what we can control is get, grab the opportunity and especially for people who are fortunate to have good connection or at least have the internet and not have to worry about the daily food or something. Uh, they can definitely, uh, like I think, do two or three, three things. Uh, so one can be uh, stay in touch with their friends. Uh, so most of the time, rather than just clicking likes or <laughs> like clicking likes or sharing the posts of your friends, uh, be in touch with them uh, through chat or phone or something. And it, it can also be opportunity for you to, uh, I think, get in touch with your friend in a nicer way. Like, for example, the friends whom you know in high school or school whom, whom you were not in conversation for a long time, uh, definitely that can be one of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that can not only help reduce your stress or help to uh, reduce impact, but also can help uh, help him or her. Because like you never know what in what situation your friend is. And maybe he or she is from wealthy family or from like with nice, uh, like good condition right now, when you, which, which you think, but maybe in different, different situation. Okay. And the next thing what you can do is, uh, it's again from the example from different countries, like there are so many things which young people have been doing, which we found in this recent months that because of lockdown, they are trying to uh, like increase their skills. They're trying to stay in touch with their family. They are trying to find a new ways to explore and also find a new partnership. So usually, in SRHR or most of people who are in this call uh, knows that we are mostly uh, surrounded by the young people who work in this situation. But this this may be opportunity, the lockdown may be opportunity that young people can get in touch with like other students, other faculties or other groups such as engineers or doctors or doctors are from our same group, but like engineers, people working in IT to find the new solutions like that. And also the final thing, what uh, young people individually like by keeping themselves safe is sharing the positive news. Uh, for example, if there is some good news from uh, from government or if there is some good news from civil society, then just promote that uh, rather than sharing the like news, which is like all around us, like mostly right now when we see in Nepal, India, Pakistan, now it's uh, some news of border dispute mm -hmm. or uh, criticizing the airlines or criticizing government so definitely it's also part and it's also our rights to do that uh, but if we do that that will only increase the stress within us so try to share the good news and there are lots of good news which you can find in all the new channels all the platform so that may be a message from my side yeah yes i think you're very right human issues should uh, overpower political issues this is the time to be more human rightly so so many thanks to our panelists for their insightful sharing and we now have the question and answer session uh, i invite the participants for their comments as well as questions if you are using the zoom platform please type in your questions and comment in the chat box which you must be seeing on your screen if you wish to speak unmute yourself and uh, raise your virtual hand and then you can ask your question if you are watching it on facebook live you can leave a comment there uh, but first of all, I would like to invite some of you to share your insights about the webinar. Um, so we have uh, Danika Shahana, a woman deliver young leader from Philippines. And she's also a member of the International Youth Steering Committee of APCRSHR 10. Uh, Danika, we would like to hear your views. Hi. Hi. Um, actually, this is more of, uh, I think, call to action on my part because a lot of I, I just want to take this opportunity right now because a lot of young people are watching us in Asia and the Pacific and this is a perfect opportunity to encourage them to talk about the challenges that we are facing right now uh, during the pandemic and locally and let us hold our governments accountable and demand for meaningful youth engagement during this pandemic and of course uh, to demand also for the prioritization of SRHR because even during this time, uh, sexual reproductive health and rights are is are essential. And uh, I think we've already heard that from our youth speakers that uh, we need we need to respond to the SRHR needs not just only for young people but also uh, women and girls during this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rome reacts, sir. 
I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly, who's also who's a member of the International Youth Steering Committee of APCRSHR 10. Riaksa. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Shobha. Um, this is Riksa from Cambodia. I am a regional youth rep of the Reproductive Health Association of Cambodia. And the youth chair of Asian Pacific Conference on Social and Reproductive Health Trends, a youth steering committee. Basically, I'm very grateful that we eventually be able to deliver this dialogue with the great con contribution of our three panelists who had dedicated time and meaningful insight. Um, we are acknowledged that the COVID-19 pandemic and this social distancing and quarantine and all the consequence is a very serious matter. It is serious enough to cause some major change within the conference we are holding. However, just like what our panelists described, we cannot just let this situation put more barrier to our young people who are already vulnerable since before the pandemic and this emergency time. So um, today, Dialogue has pointed out a very great um, possible way to continue our advocacy work, even if we are still at home. And um, the Dialogue also proved that how we're responsible as the young people during this hard time. Um, I basically hope that all the lessons learned we got from our panelists is something we can take away with and share within our network and friends in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So um, thank you very much everyone for the contributions and the good practice we had there, like the fundraising and article writing and all the online campaign made in China. I think that's very good um, practice that we can share among our network. Thank you. Well, um, thank you. Yes. Yes. Lastly, but... yes. yes, yes, yes. So please continue, Rick. Okay, look, um, lastly, uh, I want everyone to keep following up with um, Asian, Asian Pacific Conference and Sexual Reproductive Health social Facebook page, so you will not miss any of our discussion or dialogue like this. And lastly, thank you very much and take care all the way. Thank you, Shoba. Um, we are all a diving force um, to put our concern visible for the government and the society. Thank you. Uh, we have Dakshita also with us. Dakshita? Hi, um, so I'm Dakshita, I'm Sri Lankan. Uh, so thank you so much for this very insightful uh, conversation. Uh, I think we were, I mean, we were, be able, we were able to like learn a lot from uh, different countries, particularly from China, uh, from a very Asia Pacific regional point of view, thanks to Sangeet and uh, what's happening in Sri Lanka, thanks to Shailani. Um, I'd like to still uh, highlight a few more points uh, I think we need to think about when we are uh, talking about engaging young people, um, particularly uh, developing responses to COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on sexual and reproductive health and rights. I think number one is still we need to think a lot about the digital divide we have, particularly um, uh, beyond the regions. Uh, some of them, some, some countries, um, access to internet is quite good, but in other countries still uh, you know, many young people are failing to access internet. And when you look at internet access, obviously, uh, with the evidence, there's, uh, it's clear that mostly young males have more access to internet than uh, young girls. So that's another important point I think we need to think about when we are developing strategies and policies around it. Um, similarly, uh, in terms of um, the effect of the pandemic is very disproportionate. And mostly young women and uh, young women and girls are being affected by the pandemic than uh, men in terms of uh, the already established uh, structural inequalities in our patriarchal societies. So that's another important thing we need to uh, consider when we are, um, you know, uh, planning our interventions to uh, give more prominence to how our interventions would benefit the young women and girls. Uh, thirdly, I think uh, we also need to look at communities which are often marginalized, socially discriminated and legally discriminated, um, such as the LGBTIQ community, uh, young uh, commercial sex workers, uh, young people living with HIV. Uh, they are often, you know, even in a general society, they are being more discrim discriminated uh, when they're accessing services, accessing information or living their normal lives. Uh, and uh, in a situation like this, they are more affected. So I think it's really important to think about them as well when we are planning our interventions. 
uh, uh, how um, people would get access to HIV testing, STI testing, uh, uh, get access to uh, antiretroviral uh, therapy and their medications. Really important to flag that as well. Uh, and lastly, uh, I support Danika's uh, call to action in terms of young people coming together in solidarity to hold the governments accountable. But I also see uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, there's sort of an increase in terms of militarization by some of the Asian governments, particularly uh, due, uh, when they are implementing the lockdown measures, which in, in a sense is actually creating a risk to young people who are taking uh, actions in the front lines. So that's another thing I'd like to flag as my final point that we need to be cognizant of these uh, sort of, uh, you know, geopolitical uh, uh, factors and internal political changes as well because those things are affecting young people and they might uh, uh, those interventions might be putting young people at more risk so we have to be careful in that sense as well there has never been an important time than this to put our uh, divides behind us and you know work in solidarity so i call upon all the young people in the asia Pacific region um, to work together to improve the sexual reproductive health and the rights of young people especially young women and girls Thank you very much, Dakshita. Very well articulated. Uh, now, I'm just, once again, there are already many questions which have come up, but uh, the youth power of today, this is your day to voice your opinion, to have your say. So please type in your questions and comments or raise your virtual hand if you want to ask. Uh, there is a question from Dennis from Philippines. Dennis, would you like to ask your question yourself, please? Uh, hello, good, yes, hello yes. good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon. And um, so um, this question is intended for all the panelists. Um, in this time of lockdown, um, commonly all of us in the whole world minimize the travel of the people. Um, because of it, some SRH or services are not provided. So what are your specific programs um, to deliver SRH or in the grassroots level so that maybe we can replicate or we can copy those programs in our locality. Uh, I think all the panelists would like to answer that. So, I mean, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, Sangeet, would you like to say something? Yeah, so, so I think I missed some voice, but uh, definitely, um, as for Danis, definitely that's a challenge for grassroots level work. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, working online or people who are, have more access to internet, uh, maybe that's that's not considered sometimes as a grassroots because uh, if especially taking as South Asia, so we divide like in rural and urban context, right? So I think the gap now is more on the rural area or the grassroots level. And uh, once the lockdown is over, or how we can bring so the question was how how we can bring SRSA to grassroots level. So I think the one of the best way right now is uh, to do whatever we can uh, through online or like through maintaining social distancing. Also, we can take example of YPR Philippines. I think now what they are doing is as uh, this health services uh, or centers have been closed, so they are even uh, distributing condoms using this uh, delivery services like Grab or something like Uber, which happens in the West. So something like Grab, which is mostly in South Asia. And also, I think the best thing what we can do, uh, replying Danis, is, uh, is uh, I think for now, just to get prepared, uh, like what can be the way to reach out these people? Because right now we don't recommend, especially for our peer educator, we don't re recommend them to go out and do this regular work which they were doing. Because one of the basic fundamentals for peer education or any health uh, health services is to keep yourself safe, uh, keep yourself safe be before going there. So the best way again to summarize this is uh, to get prepared uh, to find the ways what is there, what is going on. Next thing is to find uh, examples of the countries or, or like let's see what they have been doing in other countries and just replicate that. Yeah, I think this is the two, I think that can be the one answer for your question, I guess. Shilani, would you like to add to that? Yes, uh, I agree with uh, what Sang Sangeet said, uh, because at, at, the, at, at present, uh, our access to, um, the communities and young people who need services are actually even our access also restricted. So the best uh, best available media we have is using digital uh, platforms. 
But uh, the problem specifically in Sri Lanka, and I think in a lot of Asian countries, is that uh, the digital infrastructure, specifically when it comes to rural communities uh, and young people living in rural areas, might be limited and because of various reasons, financial and other reasons. So what we can do uh, is to make sure that the systems available are fine-tuned so that everyone can access even with the minimum uh, resources and also to make sure that uh, we help take forward the good practices that we discovered during the pandemic uh, forward in terms of uh, SRHR specifically. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a question from Stuti Khandelwal from India. Stuti, would you like to ask your question, please? So um, I have a question for all panelists. So we have come up with several new measures to deal with this lockdown and the pandemic itself. So um, when the lockdown is lifted, what are some measures that you'd like to continue with? Like even when there's no lockdown, but they're just efficient. So one of the, I think we all know that, I think most of us know that one of the gap uh, between SRHR and young people is uh, accessing the youth friendly health services. And that has been gap in all the countries, not only Nepal or like India or Sri Lanka or China, but it's gap in all the countries. And one of the thing what we what we trying to do is trying to link, uh, trying to find a list of this all this health service centers or council centers, and also this uh, services center where which are open right now. And I think we are working on that. And I think what we can continue uh, doing even lockdown is over is that to maintain the database uh, so that like young people have uh, less, less, less barriers to access those services. For example, uh, the one of the thing what we are doing right now is also to map out which, are, which services, which centers are more friendly and what are the uh, centers which is available right now. So that can be one of the thing. And the next thing what we can uh, do even the lockdown is over is continue the work, what we are doing now. Uh, so so when, what if you see from January till before January and after January, that we see lots of initiatives which is happening online. And that's definitely have been more successful. Definitely there is lo lots of barriers that we are not able to uh, catch out the rural young people or young people with limited access to internet. But definitely this have uh, reduced the barriers for young people from the urban area that they can ac at least uh, find the thing, find learn about new things, find the situations or also learn about the good practices is happening and also which challenge is told uh, like everyone like for example maybe in sri lanka there was no such uh, big uh, big wave of like creating a content for young people with disabilities for example there may be no uh, there was no big wave of uh, chinese young people delivering these services maybe there was no big wave of uh, young people in philippines or malaysia giving directly reaching out the young people by providing the srhr services or srhr like contraceptives but right now that's happening and that's a good side. So even the lockdown is over. So we need to continue the th these things, which is, uh, which is happening now. And the thing which we have to reduce is uh, definitely uh, like the governments, like because me and my groups, we were this evaluating this uh, newspaper, at least in Nepal for last three months. And what we found is that the government, everyone, uh, they're trying to invest more on online education. And we all know that if we do that, uh, that will definitely leave behind, I think maybe 70 or 80% of, uh, of the students or even the young people, right? So what we have to do, even the lockdown is over, is that try to reduce that, those things, uh, like, because definitely online education is very good, but we cannot rely on, on online education in the countries like Nepal or Pakistan, or Afghanistan or other countries. So what we have to do is advocate for the mainstream or mainstream services, which used to be exist before, COVID-19 and also to continue the new things which will also work during that time. So yeah, that's are two, that are the two things what we can do uh, okay. when the lockdown is over or okay. when this uh, situation yes. is over. Shilani, thank you, Sanjeev. Shilani. Uh, thank you, Shobha. Yes, uh, expanding on to what I've uh, already said, there have been several uh, practices that people have uh, recognized as beneficial and could be continued further uh, from the end of the lockdown, uh, like the practice that is currently being practiced of using uh, post 
regular post to deliver medicine to home. Young people with disabilities specifically find it uh, much more beneficial, but we can improve, fine tune and incorporate other services into this um, as well. There's all, like, always uh, the case is that usually uh, midwives and other healthcare uh, professionals visit homes and uh, provide services, but uh, this is not, uh, this doesn't cover SRH specifically. So we can work uh, towards, uh, work to get these like beneficial services also incorporated into the current available ones, the practices that we've identified as uh, good practices that can continue. And also we can work on uh, making the digital infrastructure in the country better uh, and finding ways to make sure that uh, access is easier. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Now, uh, Yuping has typed in her responses She's been kind enough to do that because there is some uh, technical problem at, at her end. So um, her response to these two questions are that uh, although we are recovering from the pandemic in China, we still do not suggest people to gather together. So our strategies are mostly online as well. Most people in China have access to the internet and this is a strong technical support for us to do our work. So. Uh, as I have shared earlier, we have created several short videos. Uh, instead of TikTok, we use a platform that is mostly used by young people in rural areas. And it gave us an opportunity to reach out to them. Uh, another thing is online counseling or hotlines. Uh, we are trying to map out the youth friendly services nation nationwide. Uh, then we can do better referrals if someone is in the need of SRHR services. Uh, and also, Danica would like to say something. Yes, Danica. Hi. So I just wanted to mention that in the Philippines, we have youth organizations who are actively working right now online. So um, we uh, YP Pilipinas, they have the Quaran Talk every Friday, 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. And they have the Get Condom for free, including delivery. So they can... Can't hear you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So they, um, uh, they can follow the Facebook page and Twitter accounts and Instagram of YP Pilipinas. So, uh, we, your, your voice is hello? breaking. Huh, hello, your voice is breaking, Danica. But it's fine. We are able to uh, follow what you are saying. Yes, and you have put in. Yeah. So I also mentioned it here in the chat. So yes, yes, you can yes, yes, my yes. audio. Yes, yeah. yes. I so uh, um, so also we have the uh, uh, young advocates for SRHR online contests and learning session. Uh, we are actively uh, on Facebook, so they can also uh, follow us, uh, Young Advocates for SRHR. Okay, okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Maria Gayatri from uh, National Population and Family Planning Board, Indonesia. And uh, Maria wants to know what important interventions should be carried out for adolescents during the pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, and there is a similar question from uh, Armand Budlao, a YPR Philippines, who wants to know what will be a new model in delivering adolescents SRH services in the new normal. So would the panelists like to answer, please? So yes. talking about the model uh, right now, the, all the countries are in different situations, right? Like, for example, Vietnam, mm -hmm. they have quite open up. Uh, like th let's say Thailand, they have quite opened up, like, but most countries like they're still lockdown or having in partial lockdown. So I think the, right now, uh, the best way how we can guess or how we can start working on, uh, the new model or models, which will work in the current situation or after lockdown is over is to take in, take the reference of this, uh, humanitarian guidelines, uh, because, uh, right now the situation is humanitarian, right? Like for example, same like typhoon, same like, uh, earthquake or same like the other humanitarian like big flood or something but the governments or uh, like for especially for us uh, we are not looking at that point of view so the best thing what we can do is 
look this current situation from the humanitarian point of view though it is but it's it's it's, it's like branded in different way and look at those existing manuals or the existing case studies uh, which was done in past so the one of the good example is uh, you can you can find this manual called IAWG manual and also it was jointly created by different organizations in different countries so that that i think that's the best way to uh, involve or start working on adolescence and also the next thing uh, what what i can suggest uh, especially with adolescents as it's a very young age group and uh, so one of the next thing is uh, you can find online few few videos or few few uh, let's say articles published by this uh, leading organizations such, such as unicef or even like ippf so you can follow that uh, to work on adolescence issues so i think we can share this so you can simply search iawg toolkit so it's uh, most it's a toolkit working on humanitarian context so i think i will suggest to follow that and add something linking with covid so if you do that there is already lots of things which which have been done in past and which can be done in future so that can also be continued yeah okay thank you shilani yes uh, so in terms of adolescents uh, usually i think the general case or the general assumption is that adolescents doesn't have sexuality and if they have it's looked at uh, it's stigmatized so uh, it is much more relevant in this context because everyone is um, restricted to their own homes and in a very limited space and a lot of things go back and forth so uh, i've in 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 terms of sri lanka at least uh, a lot of education system schools have been put in uh, ad hoc and ad hoc systems to make sure that students are getting uh, adolescents are getting the education that they need but not everyone gets access uh, and i've also noticed that uh, in in this um, health or csc comprehensive sexual education is a mess but i think this is a good opportunity to make sure that uh, the relevant information is delivered because um, at least uh, in terms of sri lanka the problem in delivering uh, srh education health education in general is that there's a flaw in delivery the content is there the audience is there eager to learn curious to learn however there's a slight uh, lag or a mismatch in the delivery but this is an uh, this is an opportunity for the the teachers and who's provide the education providers to make sure that these children are uh, directed to resources if because there are enough and more good resources you can find online for free and might not doesn't even consume a lot of data when it comes to using data so this is a good opportunity to direct the adolescent crowd to get the accurate and correct knowledge rather than uh, resorting to um, informal and inaccurate ways that could distort their knowledge and their norm systems thank you shilani and i think you are very right we have similar situations in india because uh, they do not have access to correct lang- uh, no- uh, information and knowledge and i think that is the biggest pain for adolescents and uh, uh, again comprehensive sexuality education sometimes is a big no no in many countries and uh, what they are learning is from their peer groups and uh, from all sorts of websites which are really not giving them the correct information so i think that's uh, that's very important uh, now you ping says that as for the new model i think we should identify the new needs uh, that have emerged and the vulnerable populations in this kind of health emergency and then we need to reexamine our own works and services what can be done online what can be done offline only in order to find out how to reach out to more people and it is urgent for us to involve new and available techniques into srhr works uh, so now uh, i think we are already overshooting our time uh, let us see this video on the call to action of young people from asia and the pacific hello i'm peter from cambodia uh due to the covid-19 outbreak 
uh, most of the people are staying home. So I think it's, it is a good time to maintain the family uh, relationship. And I think that the domestic violence should, should not be happen in this pandemic. And I think the women and children should be taking a really good care, both uh, physical and mental health. Hi everyone, this is Reksa from Cambodia. We understand that COVID-19 pandemic has caused a lot of company on hold, but sexual and reproductive health and rights has to be accessible and available for everyone, especially young people. One in five Cambodian population at the age of adolescence. So sexual and reproductive health are very important. We hope that our government will put this on agenda. And please do not put COVID-19 situation between the mental health and the well-being of our young people. Take care. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Osibal III from Philippines. We call upon government to safeguard the health and well-being of LGBTQ young people in Asia and Pacific. Hello, my name is Kim Lee. I'm working as a midwife in a health center in Cambodia. Government and an organization or young people still uh, need and also should provides the information or deliver, delivering message for uh, young people or uh, deliver message to every girl in uh, in the village, in the rural area or uh, everywhere that they can spread their information. For young people, I think they can uh, provide information or uh, deliver, delivering message give their idea or uh, give their solution to every girl around the world such as uh, sex abortion, family planning, mental health, LGBT rights and every girl can access to the information. Nowadays not every girl have phone that can access internet, Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. So I think the way that make easier for the girl in the rural area, in the community that they can access that information is start from you. It start from all young people. Reaching all the girls is start from you. Adolescents are experiencing greater challenges in accessing crucial SRH services during this pandemic. But our need for SRHR should not be taken for granted. Now more than ever, it should be more accessible and readily available to reach out to more adolescents where the digital platforms can be utilized. Young people, including adolescents, have the right to SRHR or Sexual Reproductive Health, SRHR for all. Hi, this is Joshua Dilawar and I'm from Rahul, Pakistan. According to me, in this uncertain situation, we all should not, especially the government should not ignore the vulnerable communities because the neglected ones are being neglected and facing several challenges in this uncertain situation. So we all should create some opportunities for young people and adolescents to get the proper information and services in regards to their sexual and reproductive health and rights to ensure their good health and well-being. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anthony and I'm from the Philippines. I join my voice with other young advocates around the world to call upon our governments to adapt a human rights lens in all their approaches and strategies during this time of pandemic. We also call upon our governments to ensure that access to SRHR commodities are always available for our young people. These include condoms and other commodities that should be accessible to our young people. We would also like to call on our governments to ensure that treatment, care, and support is given to all our brothers and sisters who are living with HIV. We want to make sure that ARVs are always accessible to them, especially that they are not able to go out of their homes to get their own supply of ARVs. We would also like to call upon our governments to uphold the protection of women and girls from abuse, including trans women, and of course our LGBT brothers and sisters all around the world, to ensure that they are free from any form of abuse, whether it, it be physical, emotional, or psychological, even economic abuse during this time of pandemic. Thank you. With this, we come to the end of today's dialogue. Our sincere thanks to our panelists and to our vibrant participants for their invaluable contributions to the discussions. And let us not forget that the youth 
can be and are a part of the COVID-19 solution in their homes and communities and countries. It is crucial that governments and civil society organizations support and strengthen the capacities of youth organizations responding to SRHR in the time of COVID-19. Friends, in this ninth episode of APCR SHR 10 Dialogues, we were in conversation with Sangeet Kaista, Yuping Koa, and Shilani uh, Palahi, Pal Paliha Vadana. APCR SHR 10 Dialogues is a special series of fortnightly online interviews with leaders from Asia Pacific on the theme of sexual and reproductive health and rights in Asia Pacific, 23rd day SDGs vision and 2020 realities. These dialogues are co-hosted by APCR SHR 10 and CNS. Bye for now. Stay safe and stay healthy. Till we meet again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.